All right, what up crypto fam? Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, Happy 2022, and shout out to the Flux Army. Shout out to everybody that goes out of their way to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Shout out to everybody that follows me over on Twitter at Shots by Mata. So if you guys could do me a favor, drop a comment below. Let me know what your favorite stable coin is and why. What do you think about algorithmic stable coins versus asset backed versus fiat backed? Please don't tell me you guys like fiat backed or CBDCs. So when I'm launching these mini series like this, and I'm going to try to do one with Luna. So if Luna is watching this and the Luna team would like to come on to the show, I'm willing to give you guys 10 free videos. Like that's how passionate I am and how much I am very interested to do a like one on one training and deep dive into your project and explain what Luna is, what Terra is, like how Luna money works, how UST works. I would love to speak with your engineers, your developers, your CEOs. I would love to do a full on deep dive, just like I've been doing with Dan and Flux. So if your team is interested, it's 100% on me. I'll pay for everything out of my own pocket, including custom made overlays, animated intros, the whole nine yards. And I'll give you guys hell, 20 shout outs on Twitter. And that's how bad I want to work with Luna. So if Luna is watching this or if Luna, so yeah, guys, I would love to see Luna and especially Luna and Flux partner up because I think Luna has the absolute best stable coin in the industry. If I could just eliminate all stable coins and just use just one, it would be UST. And I just saw him get announced on Binance. I'm so hyped about that. And I was even more hyped to hear Dan say, well, can't tell you guys. If you guys want to hear a little bit sneak sneak piece of these clips, definitely swing over to Twitter because I'm always cutting little clips out of these and sharing them over on Twitter. So if you guys want to see bits and pieces of these interviews that I'm doing before I do them, swing over, follow me on Twitter at Shots by Matta. Swing over, follow Flux on Twitter at runonflux.io. And we're going to do a deep dive into stable coins. What is Flux outlook on stable coins? What stable coins do we like? The whole nine yards. So it's just going to be a short little quick five minute little interview. And uh, this is video number nine. And I still have another hour and a half of footage to get through. So it's probably going to be a 12 to 15 part flux mini series flux takeover of the crypto breakdown what better way to send us into 2022 than a flux marathon Fluxathon, baby. This video is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not a financial advisor. I need to advise that you buy, sell, trade, or hodl any cryptocurrency. You always need to consult with your own financial advisor before making any investing decisions. With that being said, Will we ever see a stable coin come from Flux? Is that something we could see? I think so. That's yeah, Fusion is, it'll come from Zellcor effectively. You know, the ultimate goal of Fusion was allow you to go from primary, the primary asset over to the parallel assets, but you could easily snap in the primary asset to a stable asset. You know, you could move Flux and let's say you want to take profit and you want to hold it in a stable asset of $1,000. You'd be able to use Fusion to go through and mint the stable asset that is now in a basically what I just talked about with Heather, right? Yep. You know, in a transparent. You know, they, they would mint that as a transparent and it would be, you know, a stable asset. Why do you so think that we I, don't see more more players doing what Luna did? It seems like that that algorithmic stable coins are just the future. Like, and what that does for the price of Luna, like why couldn't Flux deploy? Because I think your ecosystem is getting big enough that you guys could replicate the same type of Flux, you know, FSD, Fiat sucks dick, <laughs> Flux stable, stable dollar, you know? Yeah, I like that. I like that. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to steal that one. Yeah, so that was off the top of the head too. That was a good one. But it seems like what that's doing for Luna's ecosystem. I had to like watch it like three times. Like you put in Luna, if the price of Luna stablecoin is below a dollar, you burn Luna and you get the X, you get to keep the difference. You get the extra additional and it brings up the, it brings it back to a dollar. And then when it's over, you do it in reverse and you end up with the extra. Like it's so, seems like that that's the most transparent, untouchable by any government. You guys are already, you guys are more decentralized than Luna. So if you guys came out with your own yeah. decentralized algorithmic stablecoin, it would be untouchable. Like nobody would well, have to worry. We don't have any of that in the industry yet. How does Terra work? This is one Terra US dollar, or UST for short. It's a currency built on Terra's blockchain. The price of one UST is determined by how many people want it, and by how much UST is available. Let's imagine the entire Terra economy as a pool. The size of the pool is determined by the total supply of UST. If more people want UST, the tide rises, and if less people want UST, the tide falls. The height of the pool represents the value of each UST. If you can do more with UST, like buy coffee or invest in stocks, more people will want to buy UST, driving up its price. To bring back the water level to $1, we can expand the pool by introducing a new supply of UST. But where does new UST come from? At Terra, we've designed a machine that swaps $1 worth of Luna to one UST. Investors who predict UST will be more useful and used in the future can buy and hold Luna. When the value of UST rises above $1, 
any Lunar holder can swap one dollar worth of Lunar for one UST and sell each UST for more than a dollar, making a profit. The newly introduced UST expands the pool, bringing its price back to the one dollar peg. Now Lunar is more scarce and therefore more valuable. During times of contraction, any UST holder can profit by swapping UST for Luna, raising the price of one UST back to one US dollar. As UST becomes more useful in the long run, Luna holders are rewarded for assuming the risk of short-term price volatility. So how exactly does the machine work? When Luna is swapped for UST, a certain percentage is burned and the rest piles up in a community pool. From the other end, new UST is printed. This process is called Signorage. As more applications are built using UST, massive demand will cause price to deviate above the $1 peg, meaning we need more Luna swapped for UST to expand supply. Meanwhile, Luna becomes more and more valuable and the community pool accumulates more funds. The funds in the community pool are reinvested to build more apps that use UST and the virtuous cycle of growth continues. Investors who hold Luna see its value rise during times of expansion and, if they choose to stake, earn transaction fees on UST. Even when demand for UST is low, Terra's algorithm automatically increases fees so that validators are always rewarded with a steady cash flow of UST. With Luna you can do so much more than earn passive income. Luna holders can participate in Terra's governance process, proposing or voting for changes in transaction fees, seniorage allocation, tax rate, and many more. Luna not only collateralizes UST, but also many more world currencies like Korean Won and the IMF SDR on the Terra blockchain. Much like the Moon, which stabilizes the Earth's rotation, Luna and its stakers are essential to Terra's stability. Join us on our mission to create a truly open and transparent monetary platform that no one controls, setting money free for billions worldwide. Well, either that or we wait for a clear winner, maybe like Luna or somebody like that, to come up with that process and we partner with them and then we deploy on the Flux network. So, I hope so. You know, uh, maybe I'll, I'll try a, to push that ball. <laughs> I would love to see you guys partner a, with Luna. Yeah, tell them to reach out. I'll absolutely talk to them. Uh, you know, our, our thing with is we're agnostic, man. We, we look for the best, the best of the best. I mean, Solana does a lot of good stuff well. KDA does a lot of stuff well. You know, we added ETH because you have to have ETH, right, right now. And, you know, but do I think their long-term, but Cosmos and uh, Polkadot and Avalanche and Poly, you know, these are all, we're not going to reinvent the wheel of what they're doing. We're going to use what they've invented to, to make us even stronger. So, you know, and again, you know, they'll have the opportunity to use us to make their network stronger because if they're, they want to push toward a decentralized world, they need to push toward a decentralized network. And we can do that for them. We can help them with that. Um, you know, a proof of stake doesn't necessarily have to be con completely centralized. You allow individuals to participate and run the node infrastructure and the back end, it begins to decentralize even proof of stake. All right, YouTube. So that's a wrap on the Fluxathon today. That was our stablecoin outlook. Stay tuned, guys, because we're going to go deep into a whole lot of good stuff. Honestly, I don't even remember what we recorded, but me and Dan have been just shooting it. So hopefully you guys like this kind of content. If you guys could drop me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite stablecoin is and why. What do you think about algorithmic stablecoins versus asset backed versus fiat backed? Please don't tell me you guys like fiat backed or CBDCs. It's coins like Luna that are just sticking it to the man, guys. I, I love it, man. The SEC, Luna taking the fight right to the SEC. Can't wait to see how that one plays out, man. I hope you guys just annihilate them. I think the SEC has inside agendas. I think that they're trying to do everything they can to convince people that we need some type of CBDC. And I think that CBDCs are going to be the... I don't even think they're going to make it in this industry. <laughs> if anybody uses them for anything besides paying taxes if they don't have stupid... You know, don't get me wrong. If there's like a 50% incentive to use a CBDC, make money, squad. But if they're just trying to force it down your throat, tell them to kick rocks. We got UST, baby. Love you guys. Peace.